And I am very happy to introduce today's presenters, Shannon Miller and Mesa Heiss. Uh, Shannon Miller is an award-winning teacher librarian, a Library Journal 2014 mover and shaker, and she's really known for her expertise in integrating technology into student learning. She actually did another EasyBib webinar with us just a couple weeks ago um, with Biblionasium, so we really appreciate uh, her taking time to present with us twice this month. It's been a lot of fun. Um, and Mesa is the Director of Digital Services at Mackin Educational Resources. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Mackin, but if it is new to you, uh, Mackin works with over 18,000 publishers as well as a database of 3 million printed titles and 350,000 digital titles. And together, Shannon and Mesa are going to be sharing ways in which you can create um, or rather align uh, standards to various digital tools and e-resources. So without further ado, Shannon, um, I'll pass it off to you. Thank you. Thanks, Emily, and thanks everybody for coming today. Can you see my screen okay? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, great. Well, like um, Emily said, today Mesa and I are going to talk about aligning standards to digital tools and e-resources. And we're really excited to share lots of resources with all of you. And we put them all together on this symbol. And I've shared the link, and um, I know that Emily is going to be sharing it too throughout. And this will be available um, forever. And so you can go here. And if you've never used Symbolu before, you don't even have to log in to get um, access to all of these different resources. And so they'll be there at the end too. We'll talk about it. So the big question that we are first going to address is which learning standards are we going to take a look at today? And we decided to take a look at the ISTE standards for students. And within these, there are lots of different standards that our kids need to hit. And they fall under six categories from creativity and innovation to communication, um, digital citizenship, technology operations. And the one that we're really going to focus on and pull a lot from today is research and information literacy. And we'll touch more on that as we go through our presentation. And the next one, they are AASL standards for the 21st century learner. And I absolutely love these. I was looking at them more um, preparing this, and they're just so well laid out. And, and really, if you're a teacher librarian, which I saw a lot of teacher librarians here, or if you're a teacher, a classroom teacher, these just really hit home with what we need to do with our students today. And within the, if you go to the AASL site, and I put a link on there too within the Symbolu, I love too how a lot of the pages just talk about reading and talk about the beliefs that we have for our kids today. And the reason that I think it hit home so much for us during um, preparing this presentation is because we are going to be talking about ebooks and e-resources. And even though our kids, you know, we still want them to have and possess a love for reading, but now we need to also have them understand text in all different formats. If it's from picture, video, um, print, you know, e-books, all of these things go on with our lifelong learning skills and goals that we want our kids to have. And this first one really also um, hit home where it says information literacy has progressed from the simple definition of using reference resources to find information. Multiple literacies including digital, visual, textual, and technological now have joined information literacy as critical skills for this century. And that right there, I think, more than anything that I looked at um, within these three sets of skills that we're going to look at, I think that one really stood out to me probably the most. And the last one we're going to talk about are the Common Core State Standards. And even though every state doesn't have them, or maybe you are tuning in from a different country, this is something that a lot of us really need to think about and especially the English um, language art standards that we hit if we are a librarian or a classroom teacher. And also there are ones um, for history and social studies, science and technical subjects as well. But these are ones that we'll be pulling out of too. I also wanted to highlight just um, one thing that I use. You know, I, when you go to the Common Core, um, you know, just the site, it's like an 80-page document. And it was always so overwhelming for me. And one thing that I used when I was planning with my teachers and just planning um, my projects for kids is I used the Common Core app from Mastery Connect. And it's awesome because you can find things so much easier on the app. And now you can even add notes to it. And so when you're planning with teacher, or planning um, for yourself, for your kids, 
you can use this app and really connect what you're doing with your classroom. And so I found that to be really, really helpful. I wanted to include that in case you guys haven't seen that one yet. The next question that we're going to look at are what ways do e-resources in Mac and Via and digital tools support instruction and assessment of these fundamental skills that we want them to have that we just spoke about? And for me, um, over the last couple years as a teacher librarian, um, one thing that changed a lot were the e-resources, and especially e-books that we were adding to our collection. And as soon as I started using Macinvia, which is a platform for holding all these different resources, it started making more sense to me how we were going to integrate them into the curriculum and use them with the kids and with the teachers and also just with our community. And within Via, we had our eBooks, we had our databases, and we had our audiobooks. And um, later, Mason and I are going to tell you about some new updates of things that you can add now to VIA, which I find quite exciting because it's really going to become that platform where we get to everything for our kids. And so it's super exciting, the changes that are um, coming up that they have made. So we're going to start out. I was, when I was preparing this, Mason and I pulled out kind of five things from VIA to talk about. And then I realized that if I'm going to talk about digital tools, I better talk about just the standards that digital tools and why we use them. And that was a big thing for me when I was um, planning was it always had to connect back with what the purpose was. What were we trying to do? And that's a big thing to do sometimes when you're using technology because it has to tie back and, and be connected to what we're doing and what we're trying to achieve with our kids. And ISTE, AASL, and the Common Core, they all have really important reasons why we need to use technology with our kids. Um, ISTE, I love that it says, you know, advocate and practice safe, legal, and responsible use of information and technology. That's a huge thing because we want our kids to not just work individually, but work together to produce original work and to solve problems. And the same with AASL, you know, being creative and using artistic um, formats to express themselves. I think that is a huge thing. And also just to um, use information maybe to tell something different than they would before, um, just using paper or maybe writing something. And with the Common Core, using technology including the Internet to produce and publish writing and to interact and collaborate with others. And that one is one that we'll touch base on too more about the one you know publishing online and also just interacting online and collaborating through different tools like Skype and other tools that we'll kind of touch base on throughout our presentation. The first topic that we're going to talk about is research. And once again, all of these places they really support why research is so important for kids. And kids need to, they need to use digital tools when they're evaluating resources and gathering information. And they need to learn how to organize it differently than they ever have before because they have access to all this technology. And I think that's one of the things that is sometimes that we forget of, on how easy it is um, for kids to kind of get lost in the shuffle. And there's so many things, I know that I do, there's so many different things that we can use online. And so if we can drive them to some tools that really work, that's going to help them when they are doing their research. Mesa is going to talk now about how Macinvia supports research. Thanks, Shannon. Um, for those of you that um, are unfamiliar with Macinvia, um, it is a completely free platform. Um, and what I do at Mackin is I'm the Director of Digital Services. So I work with the product development and work with our customers to create the best platform that we possibly can create for educators out there and also um, for the students. Just something that's going to be easy to use, easy to find information. Um, so Mackin again, is, Mac and Via is completely free. and it ranges from different resources, anything from ebooks, online databases, audiobooks, websites, videos. Every e resource you could possibly think of could be added into Mac and Via, and the students can organize their information that way. Um, within the tools that are embedded into Mac and Via, um, Research Tool always allows students to find vetted content through their school and online 
resources. So, for instance, categories. Categories is one of the areas that we focus on. And this is a nice, easy way to search. Um, it's also a way for students to uh, browse through content. Um, and then another way to search would be advanced searching. So this helps define the correct reading level and um, you're able to also filter by content area, by interactive ebooks, maybe text to speech, um, basically being able to find exactly what the student needs. Groups is one of the other areas that we focus on, and this is this allows for specific instruction by educators. So Shannon has created groups based on projects that she's working on and content then can make it easy for students to find information. And lastly, to help the students organize their research, we have added places for the student to um, create favorites among the e-resources that they can save for later. They can also add notes and highlights into their um, backpack, which we'll talk about all these features later, but it really is a way for students to find what they need and organize it based on what they're working on. Well, and I wanted to add to like with the groups and the categories, I really use these two to hone in on different skills, different research things that we wanted the kids to do or to help us organize it. Um, like Mesa said, when we were planning a project. And so with groups, it wasn't only awesome for me to organize all the resources, but it was a great way to collaborate with the other teachers and also just with the kids because we were all on the same page together. And so a really great thing, you know, everything that you can find would be within Mac and Via to support those research skills. A couple of different digital tools that I find really easy for kids to use when they're doing research and to organize the different things that they're finding and discovering. One is Google Drive, and all of our kids at my school, um, K-12, had Google Drive. And as soon as we adopted this school-wide, it made a huge difference because the kids were able to store their information, to store videos and images. And the big thing was is they, they were able to collaborate with others. And so they were able to share the document with their teachers or maybe a parent and other classmates. And we were able to all work together to see the information that they were collecting. Um, so it was really easy. And also just to um, store their information where they can see it you know, on a device or they can see it at home. And so it wasn't stored anymore on a server or maybe on a particular um, device. And so that made it really, really simple for the kids. Another thing that they love to use and that we love to use to organize the things that maybe they were using for research is Symbaloo. And this is just a picture of the one that we're using today. But I had students who were old enough to use Symbaloo, or maybe it was a class of elementary kids and we did a Symbaloo together, but bring resources together that they were finding. So they were using this as their curating tool. As they found resources, they were saving them right onto their Symbaloo to different web mixes that they had. And if you've never seen Symbaloo before, all this is is a social bookmarking site. And so every little tile goes to a specific link, a specific URL. You can have anywhere from a Google Doc to a website um, to a digital tool, whatever you want to put to organize onto your symbol. So it's just really, really great. And they can share them really easy too. They can also search for different web mixes. And so like last um, night I searched for America. And the first one that popped up was um, Colonial America. And that's a good place for them to go because you don't have to reinvent the wheel too when you're doing research and using this for a research tool within Symbaloo. And so don't forget about the web mixes too. And it's great for teachers as well because you can search for all kinds of different web mixes that are made. And then one of my favorite tools and the way that I found, I love this because it was so creative when the kids were doing research, is just using Twitter because they have the world at their fingertips with Twitter. And so they can ask a question to anyone and um, get a response or throw a question out there on maybe they're trying to connect with somebody in Egypt or somebody that's um, maybe a researcher or a NASA um, pilot, you know, something like that that they can go and they can get instant um, just access to anyone to research with them. So I really like Twitter and, 
And it's fun too, like Emily mentioned, the hashtag. And on Twitter I have seen before where classes, maybe they use a particular hashtag for a research project and then pull all of that together so it's all in one place under that hashtag or maybe under a specific classroom um, Twitter handle. The next one is Research Ready, and I'm going to have Emily speak about this because it is from our friends at EasyBib. Sure. Thanks, Shen. Um, yeah, just to give you guys a very brief overview, um, Research Ready is an online instruction and assessment platform that really teaches and assesses the necessary 21st century research and writing skills um, that students need for college and in the workforce. And Research Ready is the sister product of EasyBib. We released it about two years ago um, after sort of analyzing the usage of EasyBibs. Users, we have uh, 47 million users every year, and we saw that a lot of their research skills were pretty lackluster. Um, so within the Research Ready platform, uh, we developed various levels of curricula to really help teach and assess um, students' critical thinking and research skills. Uh, we have curriculum that goes from as early as late elementary all the way up to the college level. And the platform is really flexible and fully customizable. So we do provide you with a curriculum and the assessments, but educators, teachers, librarians can go in and tweak the content as they see fit. Um, so the curricula is scaffolded, and it really does support students all the way through um, high school and into college. We have developed and uh, aligned our curricula as well um, and the assessments with standards like Common Core, AASL, ACRL, um, ISTE's NETS, uh, TEKS, which is the Texas standards, and we're continuing to really grow and align our content with other state standards as well. So we're seeing increasingly, especially with some of these new revised standards coming out, that having critical thinking and research skills is a big part of the underlying themes with these new standards, and Research Ready really helps um, address those concerns. Thank you so much, Emily. I think that that's something that I just didn't want everybody to miss out. And so the link is right on the symbol that you guys can go there afterwards and find out more about it as well. The next thing we're going to talk about is highlighting. And the highlighting um, feature in Mac and Via is such a neat one and one that kids really, really like. And it also supports a lot of the different standards, a lot of the different things that we need to have our kids do from finding things, from evaluating, um, different materials to determining the main idea. It can be a great tool for all of these that we want our kids um, to be able to do. And so within Mac and Via, you can highlight. And Mesa is going to tell a little bit about how to do this. Thanks, Shannon. Um, within the actual e-reader of Mac and Via, you can select text. And we designed it to be really similar to other e-reading platforms so that students who are using a retail model, maybe more of like Kindles and um, iBooks, are familiar with how to highlight. And all you have to do is select and drag. And you can see on the screenshot right here that you can actually choose different colors if you want to organize by different colors um, based on maybe the main idea like Shannon had indicated, you could change the colors based on what you're looking for, what the project is that you're supposed to be um, doing. You may also want your students um, to, this is something that people do a lot of times, is go through and have their students highlight words that they don't know in, the, in a specific chapter of the book. And then the students can actually print off those words within their notebook. Um, which we'll touch on a little bit later as well, and you're able to create a vocab list within those words. Um, so it really is a nice way to see what your students are unfamiliar with, and also um, for them to kind of um, show the areas that they need help with. Thanks, Misa. One thing that with these highlighted words, there's a couple different tools that would be fun to use when the kids were selecting um, that text within VIA. And one of them is called Recite or Recite This. And the look just um, changed recently. And so it used to be kind of a, a dark background with a little bit different logo on it, but it works the same way. And what you do is you just take the text or they can type it in and you put it into that create box and then choose the poster that you want from the bottom. 
And when you click on Create then, it creates this great poster for you or something that you could even use in another project really simply. They can download it. They can also post it you know, on Twitter or share it um, through a link too, and also email it. And so I just took the text that Mesa had highlighted that she just talked about from that ebook, and I put it into Recite, and I chose the poster that I wanted and made this great little slide that I could use. And it's great not only for you know, creating things maybe for a classroom or a display or to use in a project. And my kids also figured out that they could use it on a device like an iPad. And so when they went to that just in a browser, they were able to create those slides and use them then in other projects. And so this one, they were using it in iMovie. And so it's something that when we talk about app matching, maybe using different apps, this would be a great one because they are using it maybe with different um, digital tools to share as well. The next one is a new one. It's called Explee. And I'm super excited about this one. And it is a video scribing tool. And when I first saw this, I had no clue what it, done, what it did or how fun that it was going to be. But within this, you choose the different images that you want. And you put in the text that you want to. You add music. You can add videos. You can add um, different effects. You can put in anything you want. It's kind of like Prezi. It has a big open space that you create in. But the cool thing is, is they could take something like the text that they highlighted, and they could use this tool then to make a short video describing it and explaining it in their own words or maybe um, visually and share it with their friends. And I played this, or I have this video in here, but something is wrong with the sound on the video today. I just checked it before um, we went live. And so I'm not going to play it right now, but maybe they'll um, get it fixed. I sent them a little letter. But if you want to know more about this, make sure that you check this out. It's just a really, really great fun tool. And it looks like somebody is drawing through the entire thing. And so it would draw out the words. It would draw out the picture. If you have a photograph in there, it would show it that way. And once you have your Explee done, it's really easy to share too. So you can export it to YouTube. Um, you can embed it maybe on a blog. And you can also download it. So really simple to share too through social media. But I love that one. The next topic that we're going to touch on is note taking. And this one, of course, hits a lot of the different standards even in the other things that we're going to talk about today when we want our kids to collect and analyze data, um, when we want them to find the importance of something that they're looking for, and also just the writing skills that we want them to have, especially pulling out of the Common Core. Um, you know, having um, clear and coherent writing. We want them to be able to organize things. And so note taking is super important, especially when you're using all of this technology too where they have so many things going on and they're using e-resources. I think that it's never been more important just to keep things organized through their note taking. Want to go ahead, Mace? <laughs> And on this one, I'll go ahead and talk about this for a second. Um, Sorry, this Sam, is the. Ahead, it's okay. It's mm -hmm. all right. Go ahead, Mesa. I can go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, these are some screenshots of what Mac and Via's notebook actually looks like. So there is a notebook embedded into each ebook where you can highlight text. You can take notes on the highlight, um, and then you can also access. You see that little notebook right next. Um, to the little search bar. That's what the icon looks like. You can click on that and you can access all your notes in one place right, with, right within the ebook. It also organizes by um, color coding and you can take bookmarks as well. But the cool part is that all the notes that you might take within your ebook are all transferred back into Mac and Via's platform. So instead of having to access the ebook, maybe it's a single user ebook and you only have one copy at your school, you're able to actually access all of your notes within your notebook in the platform. And again, these are all um, printable, just like the highlighting what we had talked about earlier. And a lot of uh, the educators are utilizing the notebook as a hand in homework assignment. Um, we've seen a lot of people have specific chapters or just short books that they are assigning to students, especially the multi-user ebooks, which are really nice. Um, and you're able to have all of your students access at the same time. 
um, take notes on main ideas and highlight specific content areas that they're trying to focus on. And then uh, be able to, if you see in the bottom right hand corner, so that's what the print friendly version looks like. So it's easy to read, it's easy to organize and print out and hand in um, as an assignment. Thanks, Misa. Yeah, that, that is super helpful for kids to be able to do. A couple of different tools that I wanted to talk about are ones that maybe you can hit with um, just typing a note. And this one is called Video Notes. And you can actually take notes over a video. And you can have it be um, also integrated, it's just integrated into Google Drive. And so it's really easy for them to store it right along with the other research and other notes that they are finding and taking. And this is what it looks like in the platform. You just take a video link, and it is, I think on the bottom here in this first slide, it says what it works with. And so it's not just YouTube, it would be like, um, you could go to Khan Academy, which would be great for you know just flipping the classroom and and things that um, people are doing now or Vimeo. So it has a big um, variety of places where you can pull videos from. You put in the link, and then you would take notes on the different um, where you would want them to be. And so maybe it's at you know a minute into the video, and you want to stop that and take a note. And the great thing is, is then when you go back. Your notes are all typed out, and it's automatically synchronized with all the video. And you just click on a line to jump to that part. And so they don't have to watch the whole video again to go back to remember what that note said. So just a really, really great tool. Um, and I love that it can be just synced right with Google Drive too. One that I like for collaborative note taking is Padlet. And Padlet is one that is also totally free. Um, I love it too because even though you as the teacher sign in to set a Padlet up, the kids don't have to sign in to use it. So you can have any age um, use this really, really easily. And you build a wall, and all of your walls are stored within your account. So it's easy to get back to them too um, if you want to you know, share them with kids again, or you want to pull up information, or even just to use them again um, with another class. But this is one that I made just from the books that Nisa just talked about, about um, the study of ancient Egypt. And if you were going to use this with a class, you could, after they read a chapter, you could make a wall and tell them all to contribute to the study of ancient Egypt to the class notes. And then they click on the wall and they can make a note. It kind of looks like a little sticky note right on the wall. And I love it because Padlet has recently changed it where the layout can be different. And so you can have a layout like this that would be tiled. You can have it also be just random where there's sticky notes all over, which is kind of hard um, for kids sometimes to use because they not only would click over each other, but it's hard when the notes get layered on top of each other. But I also like the um, layout that is just the one that looks like a blog. And so it's one post after another. And that one is really nice too. But this one, the tiled one, I'm glad that they added it because as you can see, it's really easy to see these notes. And it's easy for you to make changes. You can make it private. You can also make it viewable if they have the link. And what I would do is just share the link on a symbol list so it's really easy for them to be able to add to it as well. The next topic is dictionary. And within um, you know all of the different standards that we're looking for, and even ones that Emily um, talked to, spoke about too. We want all of our kids to be able to understand what they're reading, to understand what they're viewing, and a huge thing is is to be able to understand that language and also be able to collaborate and to connect with those words as well. And so there's lots of different tools that I'm going to talk about, and Mesa is going to talk about how within VIA there's a great feature that is for the dictionary. Yeah, so in, right within the e-reader, again, you can just highlight a word or just select a word. And if you see, there's a little dictionary in that black bar, and it brings up the word right from the Merriam-Webster dictionary in the e-book. So you never have to leave the e-book. Um, there's a whole full-fledged dictionary right within the e-book. You can actually go in there and change the word um, you can just search for any random word you'd like, or you can select a word within the text and look it up in the dictionary. Again, this kind of correlates with the highlighting, um, highlighting the words that the students don't know, highlighting them in a certain color, taking a note on what they think the word means, 
and then looking it up in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. So there's lots of different ways to integrate all of these tools together to create a whole lesson based on highlighting, note-taking, and using dictionary features as well. Thanks, Misa. And the first tool that I'm going to talk about is Vocabulary.com. And I love Vocabulary.com. I love learning words myself. When you sign up, you can get like I think I get an email every Sunday and, and learn some more words. And it's, and it's a game. And so it's kind of like free rice. It reminds me of that. And with this one, they can do different challenges. They can um, you know, play as long as they want to. But the great thing about Vocabulary.com for teachers and for um, our kids is that you can set up vocabulary lists right in Vocabulary.com. And then all of your class could play this. And so with the words that you would pull out maybe using the dictionary, um, maybe words like Mesa just said that they don't know or words that are new to them, this could be a great way to use something and create a game out of those words that your kids are looking up and that they're highlighting. And so a really, really fun tool to use. A new one is called Clickers. And Clickers is a student response system. And it's using paper and an app. And so you go to the Clickers website. And very, very easy to set up. You would print off these cards, the cards that are shown on the bottom. And each card is different. And each student would take a card. And how they hold it, according to how they hold it, is the answer to what you're asking. And so if you held it, say you held it one way, there might be an A on the top. And so if the answer that you were asking a question, maybe it was a multiple choice with A, B, and C, and D, and the answer is A, they would hold up that card so the A would be on the top. If it was C, they would hold up the card so the C was at the top. And you can see kind of the kids in the picture, how they're holding up their cards. And the teacher is using an app that's totally free to scan her classroom. And when she scans the room, she has the questions all set up already right on the platform, which is the website that you use, Clickers. And when she scans that, she sees all the responses of the kids pop up on this app. And so she can see even the specific names because she's already set them up within her system. And so it is a great way to really tailor instruction to get instant feedback, a perfect one for assessment, but also for practicing those skills. If you have a text that the kids have just tons of new vocabulary, and maybe they're having words that they're struggling with, or a spelling test or something, this would be a great way to just get that instant response. And it's fun for kids to use as well. And another one is Flip Quiz. Um, Flip Quiz is one that creates an online Jeopardy type game. And you set it up and you have categories just like Jeopardy and, and um, like 100 I think to 500. But the great thing too about Flip Quiz is it's collaborative. And so you could Skype with another classroom and you could play Flip Quiz and you could practice um, words that you didn't know. Or maybe you um, Skype with somebody from a different country and you are learning new words maybe that you have looked up in the dictionary or that you have found in text. So really fun, fun game. And an easy one to create, a really easy one too to share with other people. The next one is Citations and EasyBib. And this one is also very important within all of the standards that we want our kids to practice safe and legal and responsible use of information and technology. And also when our kids are creating all kinds of digital products, we want to make sure that they understand copyright and intellectual property rights as well. And so EasyBib does a great job of helping us with this. And Mace is going to tell about how it's integrated into Mac and Via. Yeah, so EasyBib and Mac and Via have created a collaboration. And it's similar to some of our other features. It's all embedded right within the e-reader where the student can click this little red book icon, the Easy Book icon, or Easy Bib icon, and they're able to see all the different citations. So you can see it's APA, MLA, Chicago, and they can copy and paste that and put that into a bibliography. They could go right to EasyBib. If you see, there's also a link right to EasyBib. <clears throat> and this autofills in the EasyBib website so that the student can add in their information and create a bibliography right in EasyBib. Now the cool part about this as well is it's it within, embedded within the e-reader, but it also is within the platform. 
So every full record within Mac and Via's platform also has the EasyBib button. Um, so the students can cite. And like Shannon said, um, the importance of the citation is, is um, just a huge thing. And we want to make sure that we make it easy and accessible for the students to access. Yeah, definitely. And another really great, um, I just wanted to give a little shout out for the EasyBib app because kids absolutely love it. And if you were using print books, all they have to do is scan the barcode on the back and they are able then to pull up the citation. And I love it too because they can email it to themselves from there as well. And so that's really, really simple for them to use even when they are in your print collection within the library. The next one is called Personal Choice in Backpacks. And one thing that I love about the standards is it does always hit on how we want our kids to have a voice and we want them to have that personal connection. If it's interacting with peers, if it's collaborating with people, if it's you know, doing something for personal growth, maybe um, you know, just finding their voice to these tools and the things that they are learning within the world that we live in. And I love that about all of these standards. And one thing that Mac and Gia does that is one of my favorite parts is they have a personal backpack that all your kids can have. Yeah, and this is a place where, um, like Shannon said, um, the kids take ownership of what's in their backpack. So you have a big library or a big um, area like Mac and, Via, Mac and Via with all of the resources in one place, but you want to find a way to make it more personal. So if you see on the top, you can add titles or anything from databases or videos or links to your favorites. And this just tags them. It's kind of like a wish list. It adds them into your favorites so you can access them later. It doesn't necessarily take them out of the collection. Um, it just saves them in there. So maybe you want to come back to them. Maybe you want to create a mini library of your own in your favorites. Um, you could do that right there. And some of the other tools within the backpack are the notebook, um, which we, we touched on. And this is a nice place to personalize your notes within each individual book. So you could have a book that every student was reading, and they all could take their own individual notes within that notebook. Um, another nice thing about the backpack is that when you close out a book, if you check a book back in, uh, you actually can check it out again. And when you come back in the book, it will always open to the page that you ended on. It will always remember your your notes, the bookmarks, highlights, any personalized things you've done within your backpack will all remember um, every time that you come back in, no matter how many times you log out or log back in. So that's really nice. And I don't, if some of you are familiar with um, following Shannon's blog, you'll know that her son Hagen is very into the backpack. Um, he loves <laughs> adding stuff in there. So I don't know. Um, Shannon, you might want to touch on that a little bit. Yeah, well, and it's yeah, and it's so fun because like Hagen would add like we had like a football database that he would add, and he would add different eBooks, and you know it's fun for kids because they do have to focus so much on especially reading within what we do within a school day and literacy. It's fun for them to have their own personal spots and something they can have ownership of. And so really fun to see kids. And even our youngest ones had no problem um, logging in and maintaining their little backpacks. That was really, really fun for them. And it's fun for parents too to see what they are saving. The next few things that I'm going to talk about are just things too that gives kids a personal connection to reading. I'm super excited about what Mackin has coming out for the summer. And it's called I Want to Read. And, and we're going to talk about this um, at the end as well. But it's a great place for kids to connect with reading and writing all summer long, um, K-5. So really, really fun. We put the website right in there too. And we're going to talk about that at the end as well. But this is something that the kids can go and they can choose the grade that they are um, in. Like this one is just for kindergarten. There's several books here that they can, if they can either read it or they, maybe they have the ebook that they can read too. But the great thing is, is that after they would read this book, then they can go and they can rate it and review it, which I absolutely love. And they have done such a great job at doing this because it's really simple. They can just choose the star that they think that the book is. Maybe it's awesome or good, whatever they want it to be. 
And I love the create your review piece because all they have to do are drag those words over into that box. They can choose three to ten words to describe how they feel about this book. Super fun. Kids will absolutely love it. And it keeps them connected to reading all summer long, which is something that we want all of our kids to do, and sometimes kids really struggle with that. They've also created this great summer reading journal, and it's something that is just adorable and super fun, but not just connecting to reading, but connecting to writing too. And the kids are able then to keep track of just other books that they're reading as well, but really, really neat um, website that they have created. The next one is Biblionasium, and my friend Marjan has done a wonderful job creating this place for our kids in kindergarten through eighth grade. And this is the one that I, I just did a webinar with um, Marjan for EasyBib a couple weeks ago, and it was all about just um, reading online and creating that community for our readers. And within this, you can have the kids create their own bookshelves. They can also write reviews, and they can rate books. And they can see what their other classmates and recommend books to them or even accept reviews from their classmates as well. And this is Hagen again. And what he did was he went into um, Mac and Via and he read books and he set up his own challenges throughout the um, summer. This one was, it was either for spring break or the summer, and he set up a Mac and Via ebook challenge. So he had these books within his backpack. And then he also logged them after he read them on Biblionasium and wrote a review about them. And so it was really fun to see how he was using both of these two in conjunction. Figment is one for our older kids, and it's a place where they can write, and they can also read things, and they can collaborate with others. And so they can meet other writers um, and other kids that are on there, and also tune in to really cool authors that maybe they love and that they follow as well. And this is just what the forum would look like. And so they could go in there and introduce themselves. And it's just a great network for kids to be able, when they're writers and when they love to read too. And I wanted to touch base really briefly too on Skype in the Classroom because I spoke quite a bit about collaborating with all of these different digital tools. And Skype is a great place because they have a place um, just for education. And right now what they're doing is they have a campaign until the end of March that is celebrating literacy. And with World Read Aloud Day coming up next week, this is a perfect time for it. And what they've done is they've gathered together just publishers, all kinds of publishers and authors, to promote this literacy campaign with Skype. And Mackin has done a great job, and they have a page right on there just called Mackin and World Read Aloud Day. And I put a link right on the symbol to this. And what you can do is you can see who their participating guest speakers are that are authors. And you can go to the link, and then you can also um, sign up to Skype with them. And so you do all of this through the Skype site, and they've done a really great job of just keeping it organized with our different schedules. The next thing we're going to talk about is how we have now created a toolbox within Mac and Via. And all of these different digital tools that we talked about and, and the different things that we spoke about using the standards that we want our kids to do, if it's highlighting or note taking or creating citations, can all be done within Mac and Via. And I talked about in the beginning about the additions that they've made lately, and I absolutely am in love with them because you could use this as a platform for everything. And so not only can you have a group for things and have your eBooks and databases and videos, but the huge thing for me is that you can add different links. And so this is one that I made um, just for today. And I put in all the different tools that we were using. And so think about if you were doing a project with a group of teachers, or maybe you're the librarian and you're planning, you know, the third graders are doing a huge PBL project. You can put in all of not only just the digital tools, but I even added the standards. And I added um, Bibliomasia. Maybe we're using that, you know, with the kids too. You can add anything that you want to through a link. And you can create any group that you want to as well. And then also, I, last night I was messing around with creating groups for kids. And I'm so excited about this part. Because now I could create a group, and this one was just for kindergarten animal projects. And our kindergartners, they always did this huge PBL project focused around animals in the springtime. And so I could add my eBooks. I could add my databases. I could also add the links that they are going to use for the digital tools, like they are going to use FlipSnack to create a flippable ebook. And then the third one down is you can actually add student content. 
And so the one that is called um, our Iowa Animal Research Project eBook is a book that um, Ms. McClintock's kindergarten class created a few years ago focusing around this project. And so you could include that to show your kids a great example or even at the end of the unit include it so everything can be together. That really gives the kids ownership for what they have created and I love that you can add student content now to this. So Mesa right now is going to take over and show you around Mac and Zia a little bit at some of these other um, tools and the ones that she's already spoke about, but we wanted you to see it live and how great it is and how easy it is to use. Thank you so much, Thank Shannon. You. Uh, Mesa, I just passed it off to you, so uh, you should be good to go. Great. Thank you. All right. Can you see my screen? Hey everyone, uh, to all of our participants, if you are able to see Mesa's screen, just let us know in the chat. We just want to make sure that you guys are able to see it okay. Okay, while they're responding, I'll just go through this really quick. Um, this is Shannon's Mac and Zia, and this is exactly what she was talking about. So if you go into um, some of these different areas, you'll see what she's added. Now, I just want to touch on the six different areas that we focused on in this webinar. We focused on research, highlighting, note-taking, dictionary, citations, and personal choice, um, all aligning to the standards um, that Shannon had talked about throughout the webinar. And as you come into Mac and Via, there's easy ways to, to utilize all of these tools. Um, for instance, the research. When you're searching in Mac and Via, you're able to actually do advanced searching based on interest levels. Maybe you're looking for Lexile, Fontis, and Pinnell. We also have a partnership with Accelerated Reader um, where you can actually link right to the quizzes, which is pretty awesome. Um, you can also look through categories. Uh, maybe a student just wants to come in and browse. You can browse through certain books within a specific category. You can also add books to these categories within the admin tools, which is a nice um, customized feature for each individual school. And hey Mesa, also, I'm gonna, yes. Mesa, I'm going to stop you just for one second. Um, I don't okay. think that everybody can see it yet, so why don't you try again so they don't, they don't miss it. All right. Yeah, it seems like for some reason it's not going through. So Mesa, try stop sharing and resharing. And if not, um, I can reassign you the presenter privileges and you may need to download it again, but that would only take a second. Okay. I just saw the chat and everybody is like so excited to see it, but they can't. So I thought I should probably stop you. <laughs> <laughs> Since it's awesome. All right. Let me just see if I got this. I think my internet might have stopped for a minute. Okay. There we go. Got it. Thank you, Shannon. Yes, you're welcome. Don't click. Yeah, there you go. All right, everyone's good. So just to reiterate, um, we talked about the advanced searching quickly. So I'll just show you again. This is where um, you're doing the um, ways to maybe filter out a search, Lexile level, Fontis and Pinnell, Accelerated Reader. You're able to kind of filter searches um, this way on the sidebar. And it's a nice way to research um, what you're looking for. You know, a, a lot of students maybe will look for their AR level and then they'll look for a specific, specific content area. Um, you can add in all the filters on the left-hand side here. And we've built it kind of like a retail model, so it's easy to search. Maybe, maybe the students are used, used to going to Best Buy and searching for TVs or some electronics. Um, they can, it's searching very similar to what a retail model might be. So it's kind of fun for the students to come in here and do that. Again, there's always um, keyword searching, just like most students are probably used to with Google or any other type of site. Um, and then what I focused on quickly was categories. So you can actually add in your own categories if you want to customize. Otherwise, all the books come with a specific category attached to them as well, um, which is a nice way for searching too. Now what Shannon had done 
and this is Shannon's Mac and Via account. She had come in and created her digital tools. And you can see as I scroll down, these are all of the tools that we focused on in the webinar today. So we talked about all the standards, Padlet, um, any, types, any, uh, any type of website or research, resource that you want to add into Mac and Via is available. So she went in on the admin side, added them in as links to specific sites, and as you click on them, they open into a new tab, and then they open um, the website up so the student can start searching. We also have um, access to all of your databases, so it automatically authenticates into the database, and the student can start searching right within the database. So those are nice tools as well within databases. And then some people are asking about videos. So as long as there's a URL to the video, you can upload any video you want. Um, you can add in links that um, are hosted on Vimeo. You can add in any type of links that you want to have your students access. Let me just focus really quick on the highlighting, note-taking, dictionary, and citation. So as you can see, I went into my personal backpack. It says, Welcome Mesa. You can see all the different tools I have within here. I clicked right on my favorites, um, but I can also click on my notebook. And we talked about this where um, all of the notes transfer over and the highlights transfer over uh, based on what I've taken notes and highlights on in this specific book. So that's a nice way. And then print notes is right here. Easy bib citations are right here. Every single book should have an easy bib citation and it will be on the platform as well as in the ebook. So if I go into the ebook, I'll hit open now. It opens into a new tab. And once it opens, it'll open to the page that I last was reading on. So like I said before, there, there's another personal tool within the backpack that you can uh, utilize. So it opened on page 29. If I come up here, I can see all the notes and highlights that I've taken, and I can jump to those specific areas. So this was a good example. I highlighted this word. I wasn't sure what it was, but as I highlighted it, I can also look it up in the dictionary, and I can utilize the, the dictionary right within the ebook. And again, EasyBib is right up here, so you can see all the different citations and go right to EasyBib as well. All right. Shannon, do you want to add in anything else about Mac and Via quick before I go on to I want well, to I just, Yeah, well I just think that it's just so awesome. You know, like I said before about how you can add a student content especially, but how you can put things into groups now. You know, you could put um, a video, you could put a you know web 2.0 tool, you can put the e-resources and the databases. And so it's really a one-stop shop for when we are you know doing projects. And we are so big into you know project-based learning and really shifting towards that as a lot of people are, but also just to make it you know part of your library, an extension of your library because this is something that they can access. 24-7 at home, at school, on a device, anywhere they are. And so they have all these resources at their fingertips. And I think that that is a really, really important thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let me just talk about our summer reading program really quickly. Um, this URL is embedded into the, the, um, the deck that mm -hmm. you're going to get within the, the webinar. And I just wanted to show you, um, bring you to this site quickly. So you can actually go to I Want to Read. And this is what Shannon was kind of talking about. It's a completely free website. Um, we have given you um, titles that are great for summer reading within I Want to Read. So there are actually resources associated to specific titles. And you can either purchase the, the print books that go along with it or the ebooks, which is an awesome way to get students to start using ebooks um, in the summer. 
And also, a lot of the eBooks are multi-user, so you would only have to buy one for every single school to use outside of, um, outside of the actual school during the summer. We also give you all of these different resources, like Summer Reading Journal, which is super cute, and you can print this off and send it home with your students. Um, we have a letter for parents if you want to kind of explain what this uh, website is all about and activity guides and resource links. So check out this page, and then when you click on IWantToRead.org, you'll come in here, and I'll show you. It's really cute, actually. So I clicked on Grade K, and I'm going to scroll down and find one of the books that I actually have, and I'm going to go to More Information. And you can see that this book has four stars based on all of the reviews that have happened. So I'm actually going to go in and rate and review it. I can add my name and my school. And then I'm going to pick Awesome. And maybe there are specific words that help me describe it. I can click and drag into my word bank and use the words that I think really describe the book. So there's fun different resources within um, the specific books. There's also activity guides that you can use, and the, the students can also use at home with their uh, parents. And then the reading journal is available right here as well. We also give you ideas of different books that you might like to read based on this specific book, um, and related links of websites that are nice um, extended resource information based on the book's content. Okay. So one last thing I wanted to point out is that when you start out with Mac and Via, you get 10 free eBooks. So Mac and Via really is a fr completely free site. The site, there's no subscription fee for the site. Uh, you get 10 free eBooks to start out with, and um, you never actually have to pay for these. These always are going to be available, and they'll never expire. They're also multi-user eBooks. And these are just to start out with. Now we always have free content every month. We have publishers that allow us to add free content to your Mac and Vias. Um, so once you dive into Mac and Via a little bit, you'll, you'll see that you'll get a lot of free content every month as well. Thank you for all that information, Mesa. And um, we just wanted to tell you again that don't forget that there is a toolbox of all these amazing resources within Symbolu. And on that slide shows all of them right there, and there's the link below. Um, one thing that I wanted to just touch on too is one question that somebody um, just had was about summer reading, and if you could create your own list. Don't forget that you could also use Mac and Via for summer reading. And I did this one summer because I had shut down the library and I was getting rid of the Dewey Decimal System, and so we were reorganizing everything. And so instead of focusing on the print books in our collection, I made a summer reading contest within Mac and Via, made a group, um, really promoted you know, the kids using their own backpacks. We met every month at the public library, and we focused around animals, and especially zoo animals, and just zoo occupations, and all kinds of things about the zoo. And at the end of the summer, we also extended it outside of Mac and Via, and we invited the zoo to our library. And so don't forget that you could also use Mac and Via for an amazing summer reading program with your kids. So um, I really thank you guys for coming. You have so many great comments in the box, and I'm sure that people will have lots of questions. And so you can connect with Mesa and I. This is our information. And reach out any time, and, and we'll both help you. And you can also, as Emily said, this will be archived, and the slide deck will be available as well as the symbol. And so you can get all the information there too. Great. Thank you so much, Shannon and Mesa. This has been a really um, informative webinar. You guys have done great. Um, lots and lots of love for you guys coming in through the chat right now. Um, and that Symbolu is great just because you guys did cover so many great uh, tools. It's, it's really nice to have that all in one place and for everyone who joined us today to share it with their friends and colleagues as well. So thank you guys both very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, to everyone else who joined us today, thanks again for taking time out of your busy schedules to meet with us. Um, I don't want to keep you for too much longer just because we are already over the hour long mark. Um, but as Shannon mentioned, uh, all of their information will be available uh, on the slide deck. 
So if you guys do want to connect with them on Twitter um, or via email, you can definitely do that uh, very soon. We'll be sending out a follow-up email with a link to the slides and the recording. Um, and if you did at attend today's session live, we'll be sending you a certificate of completion as well. So thanks again everyone for joining us, um, and I hope to see you at one of our PD sessions coming up in March. Have a great day.